All right, everybody, we're just going to give it a couple minutes for everyone to sign in. I just wanted to start this a little bit early just to get us on and ready to go. So as soon as it's actually 10 a.m., we will get going. I hope everybody's had a wonderful couple of weeks. I know it's a little cold right now. But either way, it's all good. So like I said, in just a little bit, we will get started. I wanted to wait till, till 10 a.m. And I know I posted the link kind of late, but... You know, life, it happens sometimes. How about this February 22nd, 2022? It's a, it's a palindrome. I believe, depending on how you <laughs> put your dates in, you know, if it's month first, Alright, well it is 10 o'clock, so we should go ahead and get started. I hope everyone had a wonderful uh, February so far. Um, I'm enjoying mine, mostly. <laughs> so we will flip over. There I am. Hello everybody, it's so great to see you here for Embroidery Club uh, for uh, Bernina of Oklahoma City. Um, I am very hopeful that this spring or summer we will get to get together again um, in person. Won't that be amazing? It was never my plan to keep doing this this way this long, but you know, you just gotta go with it. You gotta you gotta be careful and kind and and uh, all that stuff. So um, anyway, today we will talk about um, how to embroider on leather. And vinyl and the important um, aspects of you know how how that goes um, since it is not a fiber um, and uh, a few other things of course I'm always looking for um, what you would like uh, to see a tutorial on uh, so please in the comments if there's something I haven't done or something you'd like to see uh, leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can uh, show it to you of course um, I'm hoping this is the last video where I am in this corner. <laughs> um, I am almost done with my new uh, sewing room, finally. Um, and I will have a nice uh, kind of almost studio space so I can do a little, little better um, uh, live demonstrations. Um, anyway, it'll be, it'll be really good. So, um, What's new? Um, we do have almost every machine in stock. So if there is something that you have been waiting for, we probably have it. Um, we are awaiting our next group of Bernina 770 pluses, um, but it should not be too long before they arrive. Um, we did get in a lot of the Tula Pink strapping colors, finally. I have two yard packages as well as two of them on reels um, by the yard, uh, so you can get more than two yards. But I do have, like I said, the two yard packages of every color. So that's that's really, those are gonna be really fun. And I will post pictures of those on our Instagram and our Facebook uh, later today, probably. So, um, another new thing that's coming along here. Um, the Bernina app is back, and I wanted to show you guys what that, looks like um so if you guys remember a few years ago we had a bernina app where we could keep track of all of our accessories what machines we had what accessories went with what machine it just kept us nice and organized um this iteration i think is actually a little bit better in in some ways um there are some models that are not listed um and i would leave comments in your app store on your review 
of the app as to which machine, if it is not in there, which machine you have um, that you would like added. So this is a picture from the um, Apple App Store. That's the one I have access to. I don't have an Android. I've got an iPhone. Um, so this is the uh, Bernina. Uh, when you search for it, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the red sewing machine. Um, you're not looking for a third party app. There should not be a charge for any of this. It is free. Um, you're going to click get there with your finger. Just tap it. Um, download it to add your feet, which if you noticed on this page, it has three stars. Well, it's a lot of people that couldn't figure out how to get to the accessory organizer. Oh, next, next. Um, so when you first open your app, this is what you are going to see. Down in the bottom row, you see home accessories. We also inspiration and stores. You're going to want to click on accessories. That is going to take you to the accessory organizer where you can enter your machines. You can browse feet. You can have a wish list. And of course, your library of accessories all planned out because I like to over plan my projects. Sometimes it's just fun to plan and, you know, make pretty lists. And I, it, you know, that may not be your thing. You might be more of a chaos sewer and I do that as well, <laughs> but uh, I'm not always next to my sewing room. So this is a good way um, of course, while you are shopping, uh, to double check that you don't already say own the pin tuck foot number 32. And if you do, what needles do you need to use with it? Cause all those pin tuck feet take different sizes of double needles. I know it's, it's a whole thing, but, um, this way you'll have all those instructions. And of course you'll be able to browse, send your family a wish list. Um, one thing that is different um, that I will point out is that you will need to log in to use this. So you will create an account and in that account it will save all of your information. So if there is an update to the app, you will not lose your library this time. Last The uh, previous app that happened three or four times, I ended up making an Excel spreadsheet that I shared with a few people. Um, but this time that should not be an issue. So I am just elated that they came back with this. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So we're, today we're going to talk about embroidery on vinyl and leather. Uh, this is Bernina Club, February 2022. 2-2-2-2-0-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-
Of course, you need your leather and vinyl or vinyl material according to the pattern. Uh, keep in mind, leather is going to be more dense, so in some cases you might need to glue a seam. Um, and I would recommend either hot glue or um, E6000 for permanent uh, seams. Um, vinyl you can pretty much always sew through with, especially with the Bernina. Um, even though we are embroidering, and I know everybody likes to use top stitch needles for just about everything that is thick, in this particular case we want to use a leather needle. And I'm going to say that again. You really want to use a leather needle. The reason we want to use that leather needle um, and we want to match it to the size of our thread. So if you've strayed from isochord, which is a 40 weight thread, you might want to move up to a size 100 leather needle if it's cotton. That way um, you don't have the friction that shreds your thread because we can't make a whole lot of mistakes on this type of material. It's scars. That's just part of the deal. It's not woven. It's a membrane. It is a solid piece. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, as far as your design goes, you need something that is not terribly dense. If it's really, 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 really dense, if it's like a patch, I would strongly recommend you make a patch and sew it to the bag. And I'll show you a little bit of that a little later on. I am using isochord thread. Um, I prefer isochord thread for a myriad of reasons. Um, one of which is the sheen is a bit of a sheen, but it's not really shiny. Um, so it can um, look good on a wide variety of projects. Um, as a trilobal polyester thread, it is very, very strong. Um, and of course it is 40 weight, which is what almost all commercially made embroidery designs are made for. Um, it is also color fast. So if, um, say you embroidered a baby onesie and a baby did what babies do, you can always bleach the onesie and the thread will stay exactly the same color. It will not fade in the sun, bleach, whatever. It is going to stay exactly the way it is when you put it on the project. Um, otherwise, generally speaking, cotton and rayon threads have a tendency to fade faster than cotton fabric. So that's something to keep in mind as you're planning. Just, you know, is it something I'm going to launder? You know, that's kind of the deal. Um, Stable Stick Cutaway by OESD is the stabilizer I am going to recommend. Um, you can use a layer of Ultra Clean and Tear with this if your design is a little bit dense. Um, but again, I really want you to reduce the density in your software if the design is thick um, because we don't want to perforate and tear our vinyl. We also don't want to create bubbling. Um, and of course, your embroidery machine with your appropriate size hoop. So today, um, the project is actually the uh, basic tote from Sally Tomato. It is a free pattern from their website. You do download it um, so that they can uh, have you sign up for their newsletter, which is the, you know, the thing. It's not quite free. It's mostly free. Um, and of course, it's a great pattern. Um, what you download is the cutting instructions and what you, whoops, sorry, what you end up with um, is you're going to go to YouTube to watch the instructions. I used the embroidery collection Flores de Mexico, number 12351 from OESD. This is a really great collection for embroidering on leather or vinyl. If you notice, it is hand look. It looks like hand stitching. That's what it's uh, designed after. So it is not terribly dense. It is not like a stitching back and forth across you know, over and over and over and over. Um, all those layers are going to create bubbling, as in your design is going to try to pop up and your material is going to stretch. Because again, this is not like a normal fabric. This is a membrane. <laughs> so we just have to keep that in mind. And we're ready to cut out, guys. So we have our plan and we're moving forward. So what I like to do in situations like this is I like to go ahead and draw out my entire pattern on the fabric on what I'm going to consider the back side. If this was leather, it would be suede. 
or slick, depending on what I want to be on the outside. Um, I usually put the suede on the inside. Um, this the the slick outer side can be waterproofed, and I I like things to be durable, especially if I'm using something that uh, used to be alive. I want it to last a very long time. Uh, in this case, I am using the Sally Tomato vinyl, and while I am a huge Sally Tomato fan, I want all those logos on the inside of my bag. Um, so anyway, you draw the whole thing out, and then you cut with a rotary cutter. So what you're looking at is the front and back of the bag, a um, inside pocket, the outside pocket, and two straps. And there's this funny shaped piece left over, which is actually perfect because that gives us the opportunity to test both of those designs. In the case of embroidering on vinyl and leather, again, you cannot redo this, so it's a great idea to test. Now, there are plenty of ways we can creatively troubleshoot if something happens while we are in process, but because um, you can't be perfect all the time, um, you just it just can't. Um, and again, like I said, there's a lot of solutions if something goes wrong. Um, if something happens, you can always call us and ask. I bet you we've made the same mistake or had the same thing happen. Because, <laughs> yeah, totally. No no mistakes. Nobody makes mistakes. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so I trimmed off that long skinny part to test the, um, the design that goes across the bottom of the pocket. And I used the rectangle portion, part of it, to do my um, test on the upper part. For my tests, I don't always use all the colors of thread. In this case, you can see I only did white. That way it stitches out, for, it's fine. What you are looking for in your test is that the design, again, continues to be flat, doesn't bubble up. Um, what you are looking at in the hoop there is a layer of stable stick tearaway, which is a heavyweight, or not tearaway, excuse me, <laughs> heavyweight cutaway which is a heavyweight cutaway stabilizer. Um, you hoop it with the paper side up. You have two options. You can completely peel the paper away and hoop it with the sticky side up, uh, which if it's one of the smaller hoops, like the large oval, um, I know that's not really small, but it's about six little, like five and three quarters by nine inches. And then the, uh, like the medium, which is, about four by six sewing area. Those two, I really do like to go ahead and peel the paper entirely off. Uh, for the bigger hoops here, like the, um, this is actually the maxi hoop, I think. Um, I went ahead and cut, I score it, just scratch it with my scissors and then peel off the sticker. Um, that way it's nice and easy to get my hoop, um, get it all adjusted. And as you can see, it did stitch out really nice. Um, this is the piece that it is actually going to be sewn on. Um, the pocket, the instructions are, of course, to fold um, and sew seams so that you have a finished top and bottom of your pocket. Um, you're going to want to use Wonder Clips. Um, I really don't suggest using um, the off-brand ones, they don't have very strong springs, and I've broken three or four of those in my Sally Tomato journey um, per project. <laughs> so, and the Wonder Clips by Clover are way more durable, um, it seems. So, um, if you can, that's definitely a nice idea. And we do have um, the Clover brand uh, clips in store, as well as the Mad Cow clips. They Mad Cow clips come in six. Uh, for this particular kind of project, you need a lot more. Um, so if you already have some of Martha's, um, I would get a few more packages um, because you're going to want, like I said, to do more than six spots at a time. Um, so for the top of the bag here, this might be a little out of order. Um, <laughs> I have marked, as you can see, with my pink Choco liner. I'm really liking the pink right now. I don't know why, but that's how it is. I have marked where my straps are going to go. I have marked uh, two inches down from the top, which is where I want that embroidery design to go. And I have marked a vertical um, seam, or not seam, a vertical line to center my design. And I'm going to use um, pinpoint placement on the 880, um, which is available on um, 
quite a variety of our current machines. Um, and if you have a 770 or 880 or 790, we do have a couple of plus kits available, which will upgrade your machine to, to have this feature. Um, so here we are. Ready to ready to be set up. So I'm going to select that tool, which is the little square in the little wonky thing. I select the grid, and I'm going to tap that top center dot, and I will use the dials on the front of the machine to get my needle right over those spots. I might rotate my hand wheel to tap it with my needle, which is the most accurate way to make sure you're on the above where you want to be above. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> then I'm going to select the bottom dot in this case, and I'm going to do the same thing. And once I have lined it up where I want it to be, right on top of that pink line, I hit set. Everything is done, and then I can hit X to X out. And from here, I can, of course, stitch out my design using whatever colors I would like to use. Wouldn't it be nice if it went this fast? Um, I went ahead and used the colors that are in the collection because um, they are so nice, so pretty. See, just perfect. Um, and using pinpoint placement, as you can see, I am lined up just right with the top there. Just great. It makes it so much easier than trying to guess. Or I don't know if you remember uh, or had an older Bernina uh, on the, I believe the Bernina 200 was the first one I had that I embroidered on. And it, I had to learn that I always hoop things about three and a half degrees off. Just, that's just my deal I guess I just you know and now I don't have to worry about that I can always get it just right without any problems so on the inside of the bag here I have trimmed my uh, stabilizer down really close to my design not not with like within an eighth of an inch I don't want to get much closer than that because the stitches do need support in this type of material this material can stretch a little bit and not like, not like elasticy, like stretch and spring back, but like when I'm pulling things in and out of my purse, it can, you know, it's going to move around. Um, but I don't really want to look at this inside my purse. So I'm going to make a cover that's going to go over this and you can glue the cover down or you can stitch it because you are going to see those stitches on the outside. This is an unlined bag. But I did it where um, I was also hiding the snap. So I used my ruler that I can very clearly see everything through uh, to decide how big I wanted that patch. And here it is. Beautiful. And I stitched it down using my number 10 D foot. Um, you do want to double check that your tension and everything is going well, that you are using the same thread on the top and bottom. For these kinds of projects, because we are flipping uh, our fabrics back and forth, we are sewing on the underside and the top side, and it's just a lot easier to keep your tension balanced if you have the same thread. I did use 40 weight cotton for this because, excuse me, I like the look of it better on leather. Um, here's that piece again. Um, I did go ahead and embroider, of course, that beautiful... Um, design that looks like a little little ribbon um, on this pocket. Um, I lined it up with the center on the front. Um, the reason I like to use the 10D on a lot of this stuff, um, with the dual feed, I can definitely stitch this no problem with um, a vinyl. I don't have to have it be Teflon. It's totally fine. I can increase my presser foot pressure and pretty much power anything through um, on top of those steel feed dogs with no problem. Um, if I don't have dual feed, if say I have a 535 or a 350 or a 440 or what have you, there is nothing wrong with your machine, uh, but you might want to either pick a Teflon foot for a solution or use uh, tissue paper on the top and bottom. But the reason, I, and that, that tissue paper will give you grip, 
as you sew through. The reason I really recommend the number 10 though is that guide down the middle because I don't know if you can tell but the um, stitching on the um, left was done with my 10D and the stitching on the right was done with a zipper foot and while I can usually keep things pretty straight it is pretty wobbly and I do have those on the actual finished bag in the store so you can look <laughs> and see how that went. Um, anytime you're doing one of these Sally Tomato bags and you really need a skinny skinny foot uh, your zipper foot is perfect for that. Don't worry about like trying to find some kind of a wacky skinny foot. The zipper foot will work great. It is skinny. So here is the finished bag again um, and like I said it was really fun to make. Um, the uh, let's see here. Woo. It's like seeing behind the curtain, isn't it? Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes these hotkeys don't work that well. Anyway, I um, really enjoyed, uh, like I said, making this project. I think it was a lot of fun. Um, and of course, like I said, we have the Sally Tomato vinyl. Uh, we also have the cowhide in three colors, so that's pretty fun um, to get that fuzzy texture without having to deal with um, leather and fur, um, which isn't too bad, but it's easier this way. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed uh, the video this month. Um, I'm, I knew what I was going to do next month, like a minute ago, and now it's gone. Oh, no. Um, but anyway, it, I, it will be great. And like I said, go ahead and share your, um, show and shares in the, uh, Bernina, uh, friends of Bernina Oklahoma City group. Um, and you will get your free, uh, CD software download thing for all the clubs for the month of February. Um, or you can pay $10 to have the CD shipped to you or pick them up either way. Um, it's, a lot of fun to uh, to have these uh, videos, of course, at your fingertips to to watch, which is one of the reasons we're putting them on YouTube, so you can go back and watch them more easily. Um, they're better searchable uh, than they were on Facebook, um, and I think the stream is better. So, anyway, I will look forward to seeing you for Bernina Club in March. Um, it's going to be um, a lovely month, I'm sure.